all, 19 camps are set up on the meadows along the route. Outdoors, with no shelters. There are no installations to wash, no blankets. Behind the barbed wire of the so-called temporary enclosures, over a million German soldiers, now termed disarmed enemy forces, are waiting to be released. In 1989, a horrifying story shook the world 44 years after the end of World War II. The novel Other Losses by Canadian writer James Backe claimed that the American General Eisenhower intentionally caused the starvation deaths of around a million German prisoners of war who were held in Rhine Meadows, a series of infamous concentration camps set up by the Allies. Faced with such a scandal, the United States launched an investigation operation that concluded that the Canadian novelist had misinterpreted documents, records, and previous official inquiries. According to this team of experts, the food shortage that Europe suffered just after the war also affected the German captives in these prisoner camps. According to official figures defended to this day by American authorities, 3,508 prisoners died in these camps between April and September 1945. So, which of the two stories is correct? Don't move from the screen because in this military history video, we're going to try to uncover what really happened. As the Allied armies advanced into a collapsing Germany, they began taking large numbers of prisoners of war. Many German soldiers realized that the conflict was over for them and voluntarily surrendered in the months leading up to Victory Day. When the war formally ended on May 8, the Western Allies received thousands of surrendered Axis troops. Most of them were Germans, but there were also Hungarian, Austrian, and other nationalities recruited by the SS among the losers. These prisoners were hastily crammed into any concentration camp that had space, including those previously used by the Nazis. There were also differences in the way that hundreds of thousands of German POWs were treated after surrendering to the Western Allies during the final weeks of the war. In their recollections, some US veterans speak quite freely of having shot German POWs. There is no equivalent in British war memoirs. The Allied commanders did not view these prisoners favorably, and the culprit for this was none other than Joseph Goebbels. The Nazi propaganda minister had been broadcasting proposals on Radio Werewolf to wage guerrilla warfare against the Allies as they advanced into Germany. Goebbels declared at the time, the enemy will be attacked in the rear by our fanatical population, which will attack him incessantly with courage and not allow him any rest or the achievement of any possible success. Goebbels' call was a failure, as the poorly supplied and strategically useless werewolf guerrilla units caused no trouble. Nevertheless, the Allies did not dismiss it and were concerned that Nazi Allied militias would begin attacking areas under their control. For the Volkssturm, the German national militia recruitment in the last years of the war included any German man between the ages of 12 and 70. They were trained for armed combat, so in the eyes of the Allies, they were potential fighters. More concerned with having to fight a Nazi guerrilla than allowing potential war criminals to escape justice, the only solution Eisenhower and his commanders found was mass incarceration. As they advanced through Nazi territory, the Allies interned almost all German males of military age. They also took into custody anyone with particularly strong Nazi ties, including women. However, they did not arrest all members of the Nazi party, as there were several million of them, which was an impossible task. This witch hunt policy exponentially increased the number of prisoners, reaching over 1.6 million people in 1945. Overcrowding and a lack of food in the region seemed to be leading to a humanitarian catastrophe. Conditions in the camps are abysmal. There's no sanitation and hardly any medical care. International law states that POWs are entitled to the same provisions as their captors. Inside the Rhine Meadow camps, it's a far cry from that. There's one K ration for every four prisoners. 
Are the victors simply overwhelmed by the enormous number of POWs? The camps were massively overcrowded and critically short on essential resources. The situation was dire. A camp designed for 100,000 people ended up housing over 184,000, and this was the case with all available facilities. Colonel Gordon, a U.S. Army medical officer responsible for reporting on the situation, stated, German soldiers surrendered by the armies, hundreds of thousands in a few days. The facilities intended to receive prisoners of war were completely insufficient. The enclosures for prisoners of war were inhuman, little more than cages. But there was one more detail to complete this hell. Unable to provide them with adequate food, shelter, or clothing, the first thing Eisenhower did was change the designation from prisoners of war to disarmed enemy forces or deaf. This modification was made to violate the Geneva Conventions, which determined the care that prisoners of war, or POWs, needed, allowing the Allies to impose their own rules. They reduced the prisoners' rations from 2,500 calories to between 1,200 and 1,500. Such a diet was dangerous for a healthy adult, and for someone who was already malnourished or ill with pneumonia, tuberculosis, or the ever-present dysentery, it was practically a death sentence. Despite being located near the Rhine River, the camps often suffered from a severe shortage of water. This led to significant sanitation problems, with some extreme cases where prisoners were forced to drink water contaminated with feces. It was either that or die of dehydration. In less extreme cases, prisoners had to drink river water slightly contaminated with fuel. In this scenario, Allied guards took advantage of the situation. The first one took me a few yards away from the road. The others watched. It took four minutes. I had been looking at my watch. Then the next one came. I thought, goodness me, I hope I don't get pregnant. Goodness me, I hope I don't catch venereal disease. Please, no, no. Then I marched on. U.S. soldiers were especially known for using food and water rations to coerce women into servicing them. If the exchange wasn't effective, they resorted to violence. There was an attitude among women, including my own grandmother, to accept these things. This can be summed up as, I'm the ultimate victim of war, because we are the vanquished, and as such we have to put up with what usually follows defeat, meaning acts of sexual violence. Most officers chose to look the other way when this happened, repeating the phrase, well, their atrocities were much worse anyway. While the exact number of people who passed through and died in the Rhine Meadows camps is not known precisely, it is estimated that it ranged between 750,000 and 1.2 million Germans, who occupied various concentration spaces. In addition, many of these prisoners were used as labor to rebuild cities devastated by the war. Some were even employed in deadly mine-clearing tasks in the Alsace region. During the height of these programs, it is estimated that approximately 2,000 forced laborers died in accidents each month. This did not hinder the reconstruction effort because, after all, the Allies had fresh memories of Nazi atrocities and still saw them as enemies. I was bent on keeping my wedding ring come what may. Most guys would trade theirs against some bread, but not me. I hid it in my handkerchief and shake as they might, it didn't budge. Many firmly believed that the Germans were getting what they deserved, and the Red Cross became the only institution working to improve the situation of the prisoners. After constantly pressuring the Allied command, the organization was finally able to send aid packages to the camps in February 1946, which greatly contributed to the survival of thousands of people. Red Cross delegates fought hard to secure better health care, water supplies, blankets, shelters, and heating for the concentration camp prisoners. We could say that these were the only heroes in this painful story. 
There is no precise information on how many people passed through and died in the Rhine Meadows camps. What is known is that the official death toll in the American sector alone could have been as high as 56,000 inmates. Taking into account the deaths of prisoners of war in the British and French sectors, the number may have been even higher. As the war draws to a close, there is a mounting conviction among the US military that the Germans deserve wholesale punishment for their crimes. A harsh treatment of POWs is considered to be an appropriate means to purge their minds from the demons of Nazi ideology. The history of the Rhine Meadows camps and what happened in Germany after the war have been the subject of controversy and political debate. That's why we find such contradictory versions as the ones we presented in the introduction of this video. Some sources compare these camps to the horrors of the Holocaust, while others downplay it entirely. What happened in these places was an atrocity and deserves to be remembered as such, a shameful stain on the Allies' record. We're reaching the end of this presentation, and we didn't want to leave without asking you, do you think the treatment of German prisoners of war was correct, or should it be judged as a war crime? Leave your opinions in the comments below. That concludes today's video. We thank you for watching until the end and look forward to seeing you in the upcoming installments of Military History.